Okay, so this is a generalization of the projection we talked about in class. We talked about a projection onto a line. So this is going to be projecting a vector onto a subspace of Rm of um, you know, any dimension less than or equal to m. Uh, and the point of doing this is just to sort of add to um, uh, so the, the normal equation, right? So we'll see we get the normal equation again, but just to see it in this kind of uh, another view. All right, so so in class we figured out the projection of B onto a line defined by A. So here's A, that's this little character here. With a, another pen. All right, so and um, so B, if we break into these two parts, so here's B, I'm going to break into two parts. E is the error vector, it's at right angles to A. Right, so you can't make any of E out of A, and P is in the direction of A. Right, and so we did, we went through this calculation, and we did some sneaky things, and we showed that, so we're going to be RM in this case, um, that, so this is a, a, a 1 by M, M by 1, so the bottom piece here is a 1 by 1, so this is just a number, and then we have this outer product on top. Right, outer products matter tremendously. And this is actually an M by M matrix. So this whole thing multiplying by B, so this is a gadget based only on A, projection matrix. So we're going to do a little bit about projection matrices here. Okay. All right, so let's imagine an R dimensional subspace. This is just a plane here, right? Because our brains are not very big. So uh, three, four, five, you know, a seven dimensional subspace of 23 dimensions, hard to think about. Uh, but let's say we want the, the part of B that lives purely in the subspace and um, E is at right angles to it. All right, so what we need is a description of the subspace and let's take it, so everything matches up, let's take it to be um, uh, in, the, in this sense. So we have a, a basis, right? So we have, right, we have a basis. All right, so we've, we're given this, right? So we're given a basis, but we figure it out, so whatever, right? So um, we get, right? So we have a basis for um, the subspace. So we'll call this S, subspace S. And let's, as usual, suspiciously use terms like this. So this is going to be A1, A2. For some reason, it's R, right? Looks a bit like rank. So here's our basis, these are vectors, right? Okay. And so then we can just use what we figured out for the normal equation. We can say, all right, well, P has to equal um, A times X star. So here's one. Right, so there's some combination. There's some combination of, and so where A is, A1, A2, up to AR, so it's it's of that same kind of form. Now, in in general, for the normal equation, we may not right. We'll have a n actually. There'll be n of them for the general m by n problem. Generally, this is an m by n. Here, it's an m by r. If it's an m by n, we may they may not be independent, but these are independent, right? It's a basis. So that is going to help us. There's a couple of other sneaky things that will happen here. Uh, we have that, and we need two that, um, using this same matrix we've built, stacking up the basis vectors, uh, A transpose E has to equal zero. That has to be true. So this is, uh, E is in the left null space, the left null space, and um, here, what we're really saying in terms of our big picture is P is in the column space of A, where we've made this A. Kind of looks like become. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the excitement builds. Because we have these structures and because we have three, that um, B is P plus E. Right, so in this is exactly the setup for the normal equation. Exactly the same. So let's do it. So we'll use, uh, use two. So monks. Monks help out here. They say, okay, try this one, grasshopper. A transpose E equals zero. 
All right, this is zero. We're going to replace e by three. Point three. Yep. So it's a transpose, and e is b minus p. Excellent. A transpose b. Spread that out. I know there's a special word for that, but it doesn't matter. And uh, this. Yep. Doing well. Um, this character here, using uh, two, no, sorry, one, one, is a times x star. All right, so let's do that. All right, we know p can be made up of columns of a. That's really what we're saying. So now we have zero equals uh, a transpose b minus a transpose, and then there's an a x star. So we'll just rearrange this. A transpose A, fantastically, X star equals A transpose B. So this is solvable. And once we have this, so we solve for X star. It's guaranteed because we've forced P to live in the column space of this A we've made. And then, so we solve for that. And then uh, we have P equals A times X star. So it's done. And we can compute b from uh, the error from this equation. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, now there's a special thing. So so for subs for this particular problem, so right. Sometimes we get the extra tofu knives, right? Special deal. Extra tofu knives. It's not true in general, but if you're projecting it onto a subspace and you start by a basis, so A, A's columns are linearly independent. Independent, so because we have this, um, A transpose A is actually invertible, and that's good for small, is invertible. It's definitely a square matrix, they're always square matrices. It's invertible. That's so that's a special special property here. Um, so I'll come back to that one. Why that is. That's a sneaky thing. So let's write down uh, the projection matrix. So we had this projection matrix here. This is the extra thing we want to do. So we have P equals something times um, B. And um, this is rather rather strange, but uh, we can do this. Okay, so we have now, because of this, it's invertible. Um, we can go back to this equation, multiply it by the inverse. So this is a special deal. So let's take the whole thing, multiply it by its inverse, right? X star. So this is this equation. Let me draw this egregious line here. Um, AT, A transpose minus 1, and then on the right, let's see, I've done a bad thing, bad thing, I'm a bad person, okay, it's okay, um, it's good to be bad, alright, so let's see, um, A transpose B, good, so, yeah, good things happen, so this is going to be just the identity, yeah, yeah, so we're almost there, so now we have a solution for X star, so x star equals a transpose a, um, the inverse of that, a transpose b. And then we can multiply both sides, pre-multiply both sides by um, a. Why are we doing that? Because p is equal to, so p is equal to a times x star equals a times all of this minus 1, a transpose b. So this thing is the projection matrix. So if you, so now we figured out, right, look at this contraption, right? So if someone gives you, and so in general, this is, what are these guys? This is an M by uh, R matrix. Uh, this is an R by M matrix. Uh, this is R by M, M by R. So all of this is an R by R, it's invertible. So the whole thing is M by M. So, this is an M by M matrix, multiply um, B with it, and you will get the projection onto whatever subspace you have, right? Every time. Beautiful. 
uh, there's a so what, what I'll talk about in another video is when why this is possible why this is invertible right so the reason is or the, or the, the condition is that the columns are linearly independent which is always true if we start with a basis maybe true in general uh, or maybe true for some other metrics that someone just hands you but you know we've set up a special thing here so what else here's a nice thing so if we project so imagine this we're going to project b down to p if we did that again what happens right we should just get p again so more more goodness we expect p squared times um, b equals p cubed times b equals da 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 equals p right that shouldn't work so really what this is is that p to the n p equals p to the power of n n greater than or equal to one let's do that so no one has a heart attack okay good just hang in there people all right so let's see if that's just true because we can just show it the p squared so p squared let's look check it's pretty easy so we're just going to stick all of this together a a transpose a negative one times a transpose that's one p and let's have another one a a transpose a minus one did it again excitement okay it's too exciting a transpose what have we got we can group these two together so that's the inverse of a transpose a that is a transpose a all of this is the identity matrix a times the identity is just a that gets absorbed so it's a a transpose a to the minus one and the ewoks are helping us no 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 it's not true okay good good so that's pretty cool so p squared is p so if we multiply it by another p you can see how it's kind of clean up and clean up last thing to say is um we, we had this funny little structure here was a a transpose and then this business on the bottom when we move out to a being a matrix right here it's just a vector then it's really this this is the generalization and so that a is here the piece on the bottom is here and a transpose is here so if you put just a vector on a in here because we go back and say all right let's project it onto a line so we've just got a1 and that would travel through everywhere here we just have a vector here we'd have a, a row vector so a column vector here it would be a row vector here a row and column it's a inner product so this would just be we could it would be just a number minus one so we can just put it on the bottom but this is the, the richer story. This is the full story. Delicious.